Hi, I'm Dr. Craig Malkin. I'm a clinical psychologist and lecturer for Harvard Medical School. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I should mention I'm also the author of Rethinking Narcissism, which is devoted to helping you understand and cope with narcissism in all its forms and all its relationships. I'm also a co-author for the New York Times bestseller, The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump. I have been a little way from YouTube for a little while. Uh, also, I'm pretty casual today. It is 90 degrees in Boston and we don't have central air. Uh, so I have ditched my usual sweater because I don't want to sweat my way through this video. I have been, I've had a video in the queue for a while that I've been meaning to put out and I just decided it was too long. So I'm shortening it up and I'm breaking it into two pieces. I want to talk about something really important and that is how to manage trauma symptoms, how to manage intense anxiety and trauma symptoms, particularly for viewers who uh, watch my YouTube channel for help who have been in abusive relationships, who have been through some kind of trauma. This information is so vital and there's so much research on it that I really wanted to give it away through my YouTube channel so people can use it and spread it widely and share it with other people who need it as well. There is so much evidence for the approaches that I'm going to talk to you about today that it's a shame that it's not talked about more widely. The single most effective way to reduce trauma symptoms over time and to reduce intense anxiety all comes down to you cannot be relaxed and anxious at the same time what does that mean well, what it means is we have two sides of the nervous system we have the sympathetic nervous system that's that fight or flight part of our nervous system and then we have the parasympathetic nervous system the other half of the nervous system and that's more devoted to helping us relax, helping us regulate our, our feelings, particularly anxiety, helping us be in a state of calm and peace. And they work at odds with one another. That is when one, other, one is up, the other is down. And when the fight or flight system is up, the uh, parasympathetic system, that relaxation response goes down. When the parasympathetic is up, the uh, sympathetic nervous system arousal drops. In the past, this went by the overly clunky description, reciprocal inhibition. They reciprocally inhibit one another. But what it comes down to really is that you cannot be relaxed and anxious at the same time. And the reason that is such powerful information is that trauma symptoms, post-traumatic stress disorder, rides on top of a fight or flight state. All of the symptoms, we can go through each of the clusters of symptoms that are described in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. There's re-experiencing symptoms, that's acting and feeling as though you're going through the original trauma or distressing violent event that you witnessed or abusive experience. Again, those are re-experiencing. It can happen in the form of nightmares, flashbacks, or your whole body, your whole nervous system feels like you're back in it or just intrusive thoughts. The second cluster of symptoms is something called hyperarousal that's feeling keyed up or on edge. Notice how closely this is linked to a fight or flight state. Hyperarousal. Hypervigilance also very closely linked to a fight or flight state. Uh, Hypervigilance is where you're on guard for the next dangerous thing that might come at you. You might respond to loud sounds. You might have a strong startle response. And then finally, avoidance symptoms. That is avoidance of all thoughts, feelings, or reminders of the original traumatic event. To, taken together along with the trauma itself, these are the clusters of symptoms that define post-traumatic stress disorder. You can have some of them or all of them, in which case you have trauma symptoms. But what you will notice is that they, at the core of them, all of them, is that heightened fight or flight state, which makes total sense because if you've been through something dangerous, 
if you've been through an abusive experience, if you've been through some kind of trauma, remember our nervous system really is wired to protect us. And the most sensible thing our nervous system can do when it is in a dangerous situation, whether it's an abusive relationship or uh, whether it is something, uh, violence of some kind, is to be on guard for the next danger that comes along. So you've heard me say this before, probably I'll say it again. Post-traumatic stress disorder and trauma symptoms are a normal response to abnormal experience, things that we don't normally or uh, shouldn't normally experience. And then our nervous system adapts to it. This is why I think of post-traumatic stress disorder as a chronic stress adaptation. As more and more over time, the more you're exposed to stress, your nervous system has, has to be for survival on ready for the next dangerous thing that come, comes at you. So again, normal response to abnormal experiences really what trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder are. If you want to reduce trauma symptoms, if you want to reduce anxiety, one of the most powerful ways to do that is to switch on your parasympathetic response. Stress is cumulative. We know this from the research. As it goes up and up and up and up over time, the more we experience stress, but so is relaxation. That is, so is a parasympathetic response. In fact, the original research devoted to relaxation, progressive muscle relaxation, was all about recall. It was all about recognizing what it feels like, really the experience of being in a, in a parasympathetic state so that people could bring it up. And it turns out that the more you time you spend in a parasympathetic state, the more likely you are to be able to move into one and the easier it is to call that experience up what kinds of things trigger a parasympathetic response and lower a fight or flight state. Remember again, re-experiencing avoidance, hyperarousal, hypervigilance, all right on top of a fight or flight state. That comes down, all the trauma symptoms come down with it. What kind of things activate a parasympathetic state? Meditation activates a parasympathetic state. Progressive muscle relaxation, PMR, you can look that one up. There's tons of research on that. Any, the feeling after intense exercise, we tend to be in a parasympathetic state. And the really good news about this is we don't need to eliminate the sources of stress in our lives. We don't need to um, undo the fact that we've been through a trauma, particularly if you've survived it and you're already past it, what we need to do is raise the parasympathetic response. And it's really important for me to emphasize here that this is not magically going to make trauma symptoms go away just by engaging in these exercises, these experiences that trigger a parasympathetic response. That is, if you're in a panic attack, uh, doing something like uh, diaphragmatic breathing or progressive muscle relaxation, is not magically gonna pull you out of it. This is, again, about muscle memory, about practice. The way you wanna think about it is your best bet at reducing traumatic response over time is to do what I call resetting your idol. Remember, the more you experience a parasympathetic state through meditation, relaxation exercises, yoga, I forgot to mention, plenty of research on that, mindfulness exercises, which trigger a parasympathetic state. The more you spend in that, it's cumulative. It will lower your baseline, your chronic level of fight or flight. What that means is it's much harder to spike suddenly into a fight or flight state because you're starting out lower. This is why I call it resetting or lowering your idol. You can't redline as quickly and you start out lower, so it's harder to redline. What I will talk about in the next video, uh, I hope you will follow me for the next video because I wanna teach you one of these techniques that I teach so many of my clients is so powerful and so effective and so simple, really everybody should have it in their toolbox. 
And again, the more you practice it over time, if you do have any of these trauma symptoms or if you just have panic attacks, intense anxiety, this will help you manage it over time. So I hope you found the first part of this two-part video series helpful. If you, if you have, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, share it with others. Uh, this is not, obviously I'm not on here doing prank videos or things like that. So this really needs to get in the hands of people who find it the most helpful. So if you like it, please share it, please comment, and definitely give it a thumbs up, subscribe. And I will be back with part two which is the single most effective way and simplest to reduce trauma symptoms, reduce anxiety over time. Thanks for coming back to my channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.